Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we are yet continuing this series once again of CNC plasma controllers built in correctly. This is the fifth part in the series and I am getting thanked all over the place. My email box is filling up very quickly with lots and lots of comments and again, just lots of appreciation for these videos. So I'll keep them going as long as you want to see them. Let's not waste any time because today's controller is pretty much one of the scariest I've seen. Let's jump right in. So we're taking a look at the electronics that drive the uh, CNC plasma cutter, and it turned out to be a lot simpler than, than I had thought. Okay, guys, you got to love when somebody would say something like that, when it's absolutely terrifying to think how many retrofits I've done on plasma systems easily within five to six a month on units that are built uh, even actually much better than what I'm seeing here. This is definitely one of the worst systems I've ever seen. Um, again, dealing with an Arduino or a Gerbil, and this question comes up a lot. These electronics are not designed around an industrial robot. They were never intended for this use. These guys that are doing these kind of builds where they're piecing together with power cables and whatnot, and then we see shield drains all pieced together, this is where things get terrifying. And what's even more appalling is the fact that he states that this is even easier than he thought. My curiosity, like many of you, is, and I've said this before, what is the length of time this machine is run to dictate stability? Let's, let's listen to him talk. Uh, it's very simple. So we have a uh, shielded cable, so coming, from have a shielded here, cable coming from each motor. Wires. On here, one here. There's, just there's coil wires. Coil B, there's just, just coil A, coil B. You just take a continuity meter, meter and, and whichever ones have continuity, they go on one or the other. It doesn't matter which one's where. Do you guys hear that um, noise? That I hope you guys hear that hum that is in between his music score. Let me play it again and listen carefully. Calls just as long as each player is there just as long as each there it is. is separate. That so is electrical up the noise, motor. guys. So just so you guys all are aware, if you can hear the electrical noise, imagine what's being radiated around this controller. Now, the other thing is, this is a metal enclosure. We can see that here. So he does have that part correct. What he failed to do correctly is, of course, look at this controller and say that does it really make sense for me to plug this in in the fact that the back of this board is all solder connections? If, God forbid, it makes contact, it could short out immediately. But no, he was in a rush, like many of them are, to show you how great their work is as far as getting it to work. And when I say getting it to work, let's talk about that. He's got all of this wiring, what he feels is done, being that it's connected and things are functioning to the best of his knowledge. What he fails to realize is it's not connecting wires, and I've said this before in previous videos, it's not just connecting the wires from point A to B, it's making sure the system functions as it should. That is what most of these guys do, and he'll continue to go on with his explanation about how he hooked everything up because he's trying to delegate a sense of knowledge. Um, we have a board. Um, we have a orange and a green wire that come from the power supply and to give 24 volt power. So we have two drivers, so they're each wired the same on this part of it. And then we have five volt power coming from the Arduino. And the five volt power just comes in and it goes to every positive on here. So there's three positives. And then we and then daisy, daisy chain it over, over here. here. And again, I will put in the insert from Gecko Drive Direct talking about not to daisy chain. Let alone, he's doing that with a five volt signal, which makes no sense. We also see that a terminal block here is being used twice, which is designed for a single terminal. I've discussed this in previous videos. This individual does not even understand how to use a terminal block, guys. I want you to think about what you're watching here. These are the kind of issues that will totally interrupt signals and it will totally interrupt 
the machine ever becoming stable. And then these are the same people I love. These are usually the same guys that will come to me and be all pissed off when they get told how much it costs to do the system correctly and how much work is involved. Because I can't tell you enough how many guys come back and say, you know, your price is outrageous or this just seems so high. And then they go and do the homework and they find out why it's outrageous. First of all, you're using the incorrect cables. Nothing in here is grounded. We haven't even seen the full build here, but let's just rest assured it most likely, judging from the rest of this build, will not be done correctly. This person is literally showing you how he hooked everything up, in essence, incorrectly. And three more positives on the schematic. And three more positives on the schematic, on the, on the drawing. As far as the function of the machine, it's all coming from these, from, these sets of wires. from the Arduino I want you guys here, to do me a favor. Don't believe anything I'm saying on this. I want you to go and look up where Arduinos are the recommended controller for plasma controllers. See if you find an application for that anywhere. See if the manufacturer says this is a stable platform to use with a plasma industrial CNC system. It's not. I don't care if you're using a high frequency start plasma. I don't care if you're using one that's designed around plasma. USB is not a stable form of connection for anything but a plotter or a standard printer. That's it. Because the noise consumption on these devices are much less. I will put the insert once again from CNC Drive from Valzis, who is again the lead engineer over at CNC Drive discussing problems when using USB format controllers. And what the interesting part is, they're the leading manufacturer of the UC100 and they're discussing this. So if they're having those issues pertain to their UC100, what do you think is going to happen with a device not designed around industrial use? Let's continue. Or two seconds, two there, and wires. Or two set two pairs of wires. The two yellows come up here to the negative uh, direction and pull, and we used a yellow and a yellow red. And then on this side, we used an orange and an orange blue that come up to this side. So that's all there is. So there's only four wires uh, driving the directions of the stepper motors, and the yellow are in holes two and five. And the orange are in holes three and I six. love the and schematic, we'll schematic to this down there. And this is where, once again, they believe that they figured it out. You know, this is the holy grail for hookup. This is what you guys can use to go and wire a system. And many guys, many on his channel, have gone in. They comment and tell them, oh, you're doing great. I love what I see. You're, this is amazing. I'm doing similar things. And the scariest part of all is they're essentially congratulating him on doing things incorrectly. And unfortunately, guys, that's the truth. That's what we see online. When I see things like this where a guy built a wiring schematic, that is where it ends in congratulations. You built a wiring schematic. This is where you get general functionality. You do not, once again, attain a stable system without proper grounding, proper cabling, and understanding all of the theories that are driven around that. If you think you can just simply wire a controller up and you've got a perfect system, all I ask you to do is go on CNC Zone Form and all the other CNC forms and review why so many people are posting. Because obviously, are we all to believe that they haven't hooked their electronics up correctly? Is that what it is? Or is there other build variables that are not being focused on that cause issues? Do the math on that, and I'd love to hear your comments in the comments section. And then this blue wire comes to... And then this blue and wire comes to the 5-volt output on the, Ardu output on the Arduino. A very simple wiring, and then we just hooked up the power supply. I love supply. when they always show you. I just uh, hooked up the power the supply neutral. just to basically show it to you. You would never hook up a power supply. I hope none of you would, where we don't actually have an IEC power port or some other type of port junction so that it would have a pass-through safely from the enclosure to the rear of the power supply for input. This is something I see done all the time, and once again, if they can film cheap content, that's what they do. He thinks because he's on his build table, it's easier to show you guys, hey, look at what I did. I've achieved this. Unfortunately, he's achieved nothing. 
absolutely nothing. You guys will see it in the documentation. Once again, Lincoln Electric, we'll go through a couple pages. I'll show you exactly where we're at. And without a doubt, I'll state it one more time. This is one of the worst controller formats I've ever seen. I'm really curious if the unit actually is stable at all when it's actually cutting. And what's really appalling, and I've actually cut it from the video, is the fact that most of the chassis even that he built he used his 3D printer to make most of the carriage pieces. So just think about that. Where are we going with this? Where are we going to stop this idiocracy where we just sit there and go through just assembling, screwing components into place and saying it's done? Because that's essentially what we have here. I don't build radios. You most likely don't build radios. I'm not going to try to take over for bows. That's just how I think. But again, there are people that are out there that see these videos online and they assume that what this guy is showing you, I can do. I'm going to achieve the same results. Let me tell you guys, be careful because it's really scary what we're seeing now. This wraps up the fifth part of this series, and as I said earlier, I will keep these videos coming as long as you find appreciation in them and you guys are learning something. Again, uh, these videos are not to beat anybody down, but they are to educate, and when I say educate, if we see people practicing methods that are based on just passed down knowledge that's basically done incorrectly, we need to correct it. And not only do we need to correct it, we need to analyze where our safety standards are because I know none of you out there want to hurt anybody and I don't feel any of the YouTubers do either. I just think that again, misguided information from one source getting passed on needs to stop. So I want to thank you all for your support. Take care.